foods they eat are produced using genetic modification techniques. The overwhelming majority of consumers, as much as 90% in major media surveys, want to know whether the foods they consume are GM or not. Foods produced using genetic modification are different. They're not substantially equivalent. They are different from foods produced without GM. GM food is a different genetic makeup, so obviously they're different than regular foods. The GM foods contain genetic material from other species of life. This is not possible in the natural environment or by <coughs> other plant breeding techniques that people testify today that this process has been going on for a long time. This is not correct. This is not possible in nature or in normal farming techniques. Mr. Ferguson, can you summarize? Yes. <coughs> Thus, GM foods are significantly different than regular foods and should be labeled so consumers can identify the GM foods and avoid them should they choose to do so. There are unknown human health and environmental risks associated with GM foods. Scientific studies show cause for concern. Without labeling, consumers are unable to identify GM foods and don't know if they're consuming them or not. Please vote in favor of HB 164. Thank you. Thank you. Manufacturers Association in opposition. Pamela Simon in support. Rebecca Miller in support. Sally Irwin in opposition. <coughs> Sherry Minora McNamara, Chamber of Commerce of Hawaii in opposition. Dustin Hooper in opposition. <coughs> Robert Harris, Sierra Club in support. Natalie Norbert in support. Ann Gomers in support. Jack Hill in support. Ryan Neiman in support. 4-H Ag Hawaii in opposition. Alan Tamake in support. Alicia Malukike, Hawaii Crop Improvement Association comments. Comments. <laughs> Sorry. I thought I put opposition. I hope. Just for, just for clarity. <laughs> you probably knew that already. So, um, I mean, we kind of return to years and years of this type of testimony where, you know, the, the right to know campaign, they really want to know the food they're eating. All we would suggest is that the most <coughs> affordable option is to go with the organic label as it is right now. It's a voluntary label. There's a bill currently introduced that would do that. If you label the other 20% of the foods GMO free, then that's a cost that will be borne and if they have to regulate it, it's not gonna be such a burden on the rest of the 80% of the food. Economically, it just makes more sense. And for the folks that really want those foods and they know where to buy it, they can go to Down to Earth, as Mr. Ferguson mentioned, they can go to Whole Foods, there are niche markets available to service those people and those foods. I would speak, not just for the industry, but for almost everybody in my family who's on EBT. It's just unfortunate they buy food and products based on price. Um, my husband's EBT is only 150 a month. He doesn't look at the labels. He looks at the price. And unfortunately, if you pass a mandated labeling bill, you're going to force a regulatory process and a tax on consumers for the 80% of the food that's in the supermarket. And it's just, it's really not fair. It's not fair to the rest of the people. It's not fair to my family. Uh, my family that's struggling every day. For every family in Hawaii that's struggling every day to put food on the table. So it's very simple. Label the other 20% GMO free. And it's a voluntary process if that's the case. To suggest that the GMO food needs to be labeled because it's not safe doesn't go to the heart of the foods that are not safe. CDC just came out with a report 
48 million people, one in six people, get sick from food poisoning. Almost half of those people are getting, that are getting sick or dying are actually getting sick from fruits and vegetables, non-GMO. So there's a direct link to some of the food that people are getting sick from, but it's not GMO food. So what is the purpose of labeling that food? It's, it's, a, it's misleading. And for the papaya guys, there's 150 papaya farmers here in Hawaii. If you saw the Super Bowl yesterday, it was great. Paul Harvey, get this, this is great, you're going to love this. God said, I need somebody willing to get up before dawn. Milk cows, work all day in the field, milk cows again, eat supper, then go to town and stay past midnight at a meeting of the school board. So God made a farmer. And you know what? you got to listen to the farmers. The Farm Bureau, Lauren Mochita, and the papaya farmers, the 150 small papaya farmers who are growing transgenic papaya right now. It's healthy and it's delicious. There's no reason to force a labeling mandate on those small farmers. Thank God for our small farmers. She's totally full of crap. Aubrey Allen, Dave against Biotech, in support. Barbara Moran. Hi, Aloha. My name is Aubrey Allen, and I'm here with Dave against Biotech. And I'm not a scientist. I'm not going to come here with a bunch of facts for you folks, but I know this is really bad from all of the research that scientists have been doing over the years. And they say it's not any different, then why do they have patents for their food that have to prove that there's nothing else out there in the whole wide world like it? And um, it's not just poisoning people, it's poisoning the land. All of the chemical spray, it goes into the neighborhoods like Waialua, and it's being sprayed right by the high school. Syngenta, for instance, was kicked out of Kauai for poisoning an entire elementary school, another genetic engineer company that makes these GMO crops. And it goes into the air, all of the chemical drift dust. Then when it rains, it rains every day in Hawaii. That goes into our soil and messes up the pH balance. We cannot grow food that's been around since the beginning of time is good because it messes up with the pH balance. Then from the rain, it goes into our freshwater streams. It's a small island. It filters through water supply. And then it goes into our oceans, messes with our reef all of our wildlife in, in the ocean, to the land. I can't give you a bunch of facts, but I know it's bad and, and it's not Pono. And I just really hope that you guys give us the right, like nine out of 10 people that, that know about it will say they just want a label. Like we're not asking for much. We just want to know what, what we're eating. And not everyone is as educated about it. And they would really like a label so that they can make a conscious decision whether or not they want to support that or not, because right now people don't know they're supporting it, and if you tell them what it is, they're not going to want to support it. That's why they don't want to put labels on it, because it's like putting a skull with crossbones, GMO. So I, I just hope that you guys listen to the people, because majority of Hawaii wants it, and I don't see why the people that <coughs> vote for you guys can't have what what they want, and it's just to know what they're eating. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. 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 Bill Seaton in support. Brad Bordessa in support. Brian, Brian Lehman in support. Christy Kalama in support. Cindy Goldstein, DuPont Pioneer in opposition.
morning, Chair Woolley, Vice Chair Onishi, and members of the House Committee on Ag. Pioneer opposes House Bill 174 calling for labeling. We strongly believe in the importance of research and innovation to develop crops that bring benefit to farmers. Our work is science-based, and the introdu introduction of new genetically engineered crops follows years of evaluation and testing under a robust regulatory system. There's widespread agreement among scientists in the regulatory system that the scientific studies and thorough evaluation of data show biotech crops and food ingredients are safe. We have two federal agencies that already scrutinize and regulate biotech crops. The U.S. Department of Agriculture provides extensive oversight and already evaluates health and safety impacts of new genetically engineered crops and genes prior to the initial uh, introduction of a genetically engineered crop. Also, the Environmental Protection Agency has a role in regulation, and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration reviews extensive data on chemical composition, nutritional value, potential for allergenicity, and other health and safety related components of genetically engineered crops. Uh, this bill does call for the State Department of Agriculture to develop a new administrative program that would require creation of an infrastructure to carry out the program. This would be costly. The cost would be passed on to those of us that live here in Hawaii and shop at farmers markets, grocery stores, and retail markets. Already, the Hawaii Department of Ag is tasked with oversight of genetically engineered crops and foods. It's redundant to have federal agencies and the state agency already tasked with oversight of these crops. Consumers that wish to avoid eating genetically engineered foods have a way to easily differentiate these products. We know that organic whole foods and organic food ingredients will not have GE content. We also have food products that are labeled as GMO free on their existing labels. Thank you for the opportunity to present testimony in support of science-based decision making in opposition to the proposed legislation. <coughs> Thank you. Chair Jim Longville, in support. Claudia, in opposition. Clifton Hasegawa, in opposition. Courtney Grunt, GMO Free Maui, Oahu Big Island, in support. Craig Turner, in support. Cynthia Chan, in support. David Dinner in support. B. Raffi in support. Diana in opposition. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Diane Lung. Luna Hall in opposition. Don Burby in opposition. Donna Maltz in support. Douglas Pittman in support. Gladys Baisa, Maui County Council Chair in support. H. Doug Matsuoka in support. Carol Teaser in opposition. Henry Curtis, Life of the Land in support. Aloha, Chair Woolley, Vice Chair, Amici, members of the committee. I'm Henry Curtis, Executive Director of Life of the Land. Life of the Land has a long role playing in agriculture, sustainable agriculture. We were one of the groups that sued over the heptachlor incident in the 80s. I also have a long personal experience in agriculture. I went door to door on pesticide issues in California in the 80s. One of the issues that has not really been addressed is the religious issue. There are some religions that have dietary restrictions, and yet the biotech industry suggests that they can take certain genes of certain animals and insert them in plants and sell, sell them as plants, God be gone. Second, We've heard from the pro-biotech industry that one out of six Americans gets a 
health born disease every year and they're not from GMO. I wonder how, without labeling, they know that. <laughs> <laughs> biotech industry says there's no cost impact except if you pass this bill. That's malarkey. <laughs> the invention of super weeds and the heavier use of pesticides has a massive effect and a cost impact on every American. So it's not that this bill would drive up costs. This bill would help save some of the costs we're currently paying for. I don't see that Monsanto and others have put up a bond for when these <coughs> problems develop. They don't have a bond ready to do the cleanup costs. When did we make a conscious decision in this society to have the companies that develop chemical warfare be in charge of our food supply? Finally, the biotech industry has been involved in a process of revolving doors where they lend their people to regulators who write very comfortable laws and then they go back to industry and they say, see, we're regulated. It is time to pass laws that have widespread support and not support an industry which represents one hundredth of one thousand of one percent. Thank you. Hey, ho. James Mac Marcy. Macy. Good morning, thank you. Um, and thank you for hearing this bill. Uh, it's spectacular. This when this passes, you guys are the heroes. Um, I take my health very seriously. I take the health of my children and my grandchildren extremely seriously. I hope you will too. Um, I, uh, I'm a retired naval officer. Uh, I used to work in NASA. I have a master's degree and I'm in two classes from ADB. Um, so I, excuse me, excuse me. Can I ask you to talk into the mic? So can you sure, thank you. I'm a retired naval officer. I work for NASA. I have a master's degree and I'm also two classes from ADB. Um, I support good science. The GMOs are not good science. Um, Mr. Perlock said there's no study saying this is bad or whatever. Uh, all the studies I've seen, uh, there's plenty that say uh, the GMO uh, uh, science is not good. Um, he also said that there's no difference in nutritional value of the foods. The studies that I've read, uh, dating back to the 50s, say that these pesticides that they spray in our land are depleting the soil of nutrients and, it, and it's affecting our food. Uh, it studies you know, compare it to food from before the pesticides and then after the pesticides. You know, even dating back to the 50s, it was bad, and it's getting worse now. And we're seeing it in our health of our children, the health of the entire country being affected. Um, you, it was also mentioned that, you know, about the papayas, you know, um, if, if you're going to hurt the papaya uh, farmers if you label it, uh, they're already labeling it when they send it to Japan. Uh, what's the problem? Uh, TITV even asked them in an interview when they first started shipping in Japan and they had to put the label on it, you know, how much is, is there a problem, how much does it cost? And, and the guy in the papaya farm said, no, no problem, no problem. So uh, that argument to me is, is, a, is, a, is a fallacy. Um, I, I grew up in Michigan. I spent uh, uh, summers at a lake cottage with my grandparents and I go back there and visit probably every three or four years. And uh, back when I was a child, Frogs would see me to sleep, thousands of them. You go back there now, if you hear one, it's a surprise. And it's because it's surrounded by farms and they spray this accuracy mix and gentle sprays out here. And uh, it, 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 it kills the frog. It changes their sex, too. I mean, it's just, I, these are actual studies. I mean, this is no fact. I mean, we need to know what we're doing, what we're doing. So please, wait, right? please support this bill. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to recess this committee uh, for a couple minutes so that we can uh, convene a joint committee and then we will come back uh, tomorrow morning. We're currently researching the 1980 Okay, we're in recess. We'll come back soon. Maybe we'll get some. Uh, huh?
I think so, something like that. It, until they decide, maybe I'll get some uh, interviews, the hallway interviews. There's uh, Mark Phillipson sitting next to Cindy Goldstein. Blade is we're in recess. I'm going to get some uh, interviews in the hallway. I think you're sitting right behind Cindy Goldstein and Mark Phillips. <laughs> Here's uh, Mark Takimoto, Monsanto. A lot of lobbyists here. Daniel Manahai, thank you, brother. <laughs> hey, Doug. Hey, how's it? Great. <laughs> Uh, Alicia Malofiti, who uh, pretends to be poor, actually well-funded lobbyist of the GMO industry here. I'm gonna get out into the hallway, see if anybody wants to talk. <laughs> Hi, Dave, and you're, you're live on the air. What do you think so far? I'm glad we're here to uh, speak uh, for the labeling bill. You know, that's that's really good. Uh, so I'm happy that we're hearing the bill, and I'm hoping that the, uh, it will take appropriate action here today and pass this bill so that uh, people uh, will have knowledge when they make their purchases. Me too. Thanks a lot, Dave. You're going to go back in when, when the meeting reconvenes? Oh, yes. <laughs> People wheeling Jim over. He came out with some kind of brain cancer. And I offered to give him some of my things to say. He deserved to die. Oh, just wanted to say thanks, James. You're welcome. <laughs> I can get into people's faces, sorry, I don't mean to do that. We're in recess now, we're in the state capitol, the house auditorium on the uh, ground floor if you got to get here. If you haven't been here before, it's a little hard to find. I'm gonna while we're in recess, I may uh, walk around and uh, get some, uh, we're, well, we're back, that was a short recess. Try and get an interview with. Well, oh, this is a good sign. It's a great sign out here. Hello, welcome to the Hawaii State Capitol. Going with lobbyists. Thank you. 
are in them. And it's not an easy task. It takes hours to do this kind of thing, which I think should give people right people to know what to do. Um, another thing that I'm concerned about is that um, possibly organic products from the water sample. Maybe I can get a interview. You got a couple seconds for a live interview? Sure. I'm doing why tell me why you're here and what's up. Oh there's so many good bills up today. IHB 174 for GMO labeling is my priority. I'm really hoping it passes. And we submitted nineteen pages of testimony and I don't know, hundred and twenty hundred and not including probably in total two hundred and eighty articles, scholarly articles and research. <laughs> I I have a I've been up overnight working on the base <laughs> legislative website, so um, I'm amazed that I'm I should drink that iced tea I brought. I'm a little bit tired. I like the uh, I like your kind of digest that you post with the three step kind of thing because I followed that. Awesome, yeah. A lot of people do. We got a lot of positive feedback about that. Uh, just to put up a legislative guide and broke. But there's so much. There's there's dozens of bills related to GMOs, and we really need to catch the good ones and right. make them flourish and stop the bad. And ones. the tricky ones. There's some and tricky the ones. Yes, we have SB 631 today, which has to go. Um, SB 96, 97, 98, all good except 96. It gives a $50,000 first 50 grant of income for farmers to get a tax relief. However, um, so we are, uh, uh, Felicia will love you too, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> She's pretending to be a poor person. Yeah. I know, I'm going to I'm gonna have to address that. So, anyways, tax break for the first 50 grant for small family farmers. However, um, I'm like, they open the door back up after Alicia will look at <laughs> 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 uh, Where was I? Where was I? <laughs> How blessed. <Alicia>. Well, the, <laughs> <laughs> the legislative package online was great. I'm sorry, I've been, I've been yeah. overnight the last two nights because the, sh the hearing notices are so short for this. Yeah, you know, you're right. And it's so much and people don't understand. So if somebody doesn't, you have to make it easy for people to get involved you have and to engage absolutely. in their community and make them feel good about being a good citizen and, and you know, standing up for what they believe in. So you're doing a good job at that. Where can people find out more and follow you? You have a website, Twitter we account. Have so many of all those, and you can find all of them at uh, www.omggmowtf.com. <laughs> and you can also reach us at babesagainstbiotech.org as well. And Babes Against GMO and Twitter. Thank you very much. Thanks. Oh, the cool video of the video. <laughs> so, no, that, that, video. I know this. I got. I want to see that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> support. and Takemoto. Monsanto. Monsanto. Monsanto.
you. Thank you. in support. Nancy Redfeather, comments. Natalie Norber, in support. Lowell Kamura, Hawaii Food Industry Association, in opposition. Pamela Wiley, in support. 
support. Paul Carter in support. Philip Oi, 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 Oji in support. I'm sorry about that. Uh, Robert Mueller in support. Robert Petrus, 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 in support. Robin Smith in support. Rodney Evans in support. Ron Carlson in support. Rosemary Aldridge in opposition. Sabina Pittman in support. Sage in support. Shane Alwaston in opposition. Shannon Rudolph in support. Sharon in support. Stan Waller in support. Summer Brock Faria in support. Susan Douglas in support. Tamara Halton in support. Tammy Lester in support. Tanya Winter in support. Thomas Hall in support. Thomas Marine Golo in opposition. Valerie Gobo, comments. Are there any persons here that want to testify? Hmm. <laughs> Chair Woolley, Vice Chair of Eastern Members of the Committee, um, I'm sorry you called on me before I was out of the room. My name is Alan Duffy, but I'm here on behalf of the White Cattlemen's Council. I'm a rancher in the Government Affairs Chairperson of the White Cattlemen's Council. The White Cattlemen's Council strongly opposes HB 174. Along with our national organization, our association has always felt that such labeling, such as country of origin labeling, should be a market-driven tool, not a regulatory one. The White Cattlemen's Council supports all types of farming and ranching, natural, organic, conventional, and cutting edge, including GMO and other science advanced forms, and has not tried to endorse one over the other. We don't see that the advancement of one should be at the risk or detriment of the other. This bill goes far beyond what was even proposed and failed on California's ballot this past November. But it also requires that any meat and poultry, milk and eggs, anything from livestock fed with GMO feeds be labeled. This would require the vast majority of all meat and poultry, milk and eggs, coming into the state of Hawaii be labeled. If we're striving to uh, promote food security in Hawaii, this labeling requirement would be put would put Hawaii more at risk as it is estimated 80% of the foods from here and elsewhere will have to be labeled, adding even more cost to consumers. We agree that consumers have the right to know, but wouldn't it make more sense with GMO-free products to label their products as such, placing it as a premium product in some people's minds? The premium price could more than, more than pay for uh, adding, a label, uh, adding a label stating the product is GMO-free. Food labeled organic generally sells for much more than a non-organic counterpart. Are we next going to propose labeling all uh, non-organic foods, non-organic, or any foods not made in Hawaii, not made in Hawaii? Whole Foods is a great model for giving consumers the things they want to know. We offer organic foods, GMO-free foods, and natural foods, and five different levels of meat. They don't force producers to label their product GMO or non-organic, but they have signs by food bins letting consumers know if the food in the bin is organic, natural, or GMO-free. If this is what consumers want, shouldn't we let markets use this for their competitive advantage? Mr. Godley, can you please summarize? Um, yep. Uh, genetic engineering has literally saved the papaya industry in the state, even though some will have you believe otherwise. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to testify. Thank you. And before we continue, as you come up, if you could please state your name, that would be great. We are not going to have time, as I look at this uh, line, for everybody uh, right now. We're going to have to break at 11.45 so that the members can go to session. But I want to make
make sure that we all have a chance to hear what you have to say. So Jerry, the committee clerk um, for Vice Chair Arden, she's going to make sure he gets the name of everybody so that we know your status. If you've submitted written testimony, if you want to submit oral testimony, those types of issues. So if you could provide that information to him, and we will try to get through as many testimonials as we can. Mahalo. <coughs> Aloha, thank you for the opportunity to testify today. My name is Annie Sweet. I don't know about you, but I do not walk down the pesticide aisle at Home Depot and think, oh, let's add that to my meal tonight. <laughs> and yet there is GMBT corn, at, which is a registered pesticide and is available for purchase with no label telling me so. I like knowing what I'm eating. Like most people, I think I eat a healthy, balanced diet. When I shop, I read labels to make sure I am making choices that are intentional. What I don't see on those labels is whether what I am holding in my hand has been altered in some way by genetically inserting the material of one species, animal, plant, bacteria, virus, or chemical, into the genetic sequencing of another species. This concerns me because there, are, there have been no long-term studies on the effects of consuming products genetically engineering on humans. It seems logical that our citizens should have the right to choose whether to eat foods that haven't been proven safe for long-term consumption. A simple label gives me the opportunity to make that decision myself, just like I can read a label and see how much trans fat it contains and make an educated choice regarding whether or not to eat it. If I were to visit Japan and pick up a rainbow papaya grown in the state of Hawaii, I would see a label telling me it is a product of genetic engineering. Why don't the citizens of Hawaii have the same rights regarding the same product on our own soil? We all have the right to make educated decisions for ourselves and for our families. Please vote yes on HB 147. Doing so proves that you agree. And I would like to say one thing to the, the uh, Monsanto lobbyists regarding um, suggesting that I only purchase organic foods. Uh, by doing so, I would be pushing the ratio up of foods that are imported into our state well above the 85 to 90 percent that it is right now, and I would be eliminating the opportunity to buy from the conventional farmer who practices good agricultural practices and who, who, who is the small family farmer that she says she supports. So how is how is a label, how is a label not going to enhance my choices? Thank you for your time. Thank you. My name is Winnie He, private citizen. I'm testifying in opposition to HB 174. I support local agriculture by shopping at farmers markets and buying island fresh and local grown as much as possible. How much does it cost uh, the consumer uh, to have the farmer label the product island fresh and local grown? GMO lobbyist says it raises the cost to me. Um, you are intelligent people. You must know if we follow this bill and we label every product that has a bit of uh, soy lecithin, soy isolate, um, protein whatever, um, high fructose corn sweetener, and any of the hundreds of uh, ingredients that have some GMO soy or corn or other uh, processed GMO uh, uh, material in it, that would, we would be labeling something like 80% um, uh, of the, the processed foods in the supermarket or more, and you know that would be a little ridiculous. So I want to know why you intelligent people would not hear Bill HB 733, which is a more reasonable, uh, more easily implemented labeling bill of labeling whole GMO foods. Instead of this one, I think it was designed to fail. Um, and you know, you're intelligent, you know that the real reason that GMO companies are afraid of labeling GMO foods is because of the yuck factor. Okay, the uh, recent example was pink slime. When people found out that uh, pink slime was actually lean, finely textured beef 
uh, from leaf scraps that with the fat melted off and pureed and sterilized with ammonia, yuck! They didn't want to eat it anymore. And we just had an example recently of uh, that flame retardant uh, put in Gatorade, a brom bromiated vegetable oil. When people learned of that, yuck, they didn't want to eat it. Gatorade had to change the formula even though they said it was safe. Now people in Hawaii, um, like Alicia Malua Fiti's uh, relatives on the EBT cards, they don't care what it is. You know, spam, it's cheap. They don't care what it is. They'll eat it anyway. But I care and I want to know and I want to choose. Please. Please. Uh, I want you to hear Bill H, uh, HB 733. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Good morning, committee. Thank you for hearing testimony today. My name is Trisha Gonzalez, and I'm testifying on behalf of Down to Earth Organic and Natural. Um, we have four stores here on Oahu and one on Maui. We've been serving our island community since 1977. Down to Earth supports this bill and labeling of all GMO foods. We feel strongly that consumers have the right to know and choose the food that they are buying. As increased awareness, spreads about genetically modified ingredients, so does public concern. Our customers are asking if our products have GMOs. They want to know and they have a right to know. Regardless of the arguments surrounding whether GMOs are safe or not to consume, this issue is a separate issue. This is a basic right to know what is in our food. And we support this. We support our customers having a right to choose. The people are asking, down to earth is asking, and we the people have spoken. So please support House Bill um, seven, what we, 174, and um, please pass this bill, and thank you for your consideration. Aloha. Thank you. Aloha, my, my name is Daniel Anthony, and I am in support of this bill. I'd like to speak to the uh, democratic patriot in each and every one of you. A vote to hear the bill, a vote yes, is, is a patriotic voice to hear the bill. You know, if by, by voting no, what you're saying is that you're unpatriotic and you refuse to even openly hold a discussion. Now, I just want to uh, talk about a few couple of points here. One, as you guys are hearing this testimony, I hope you guys are doing a little bit of research about the people that are, are giving you testimony. I can tell you, I was a naughty kid as a youth. I stole some money from my auntie. My auntie is now Senator Miley Shimabukuro. Um, you know, life is long. I think you should look at the companies that are voting against this, and you'll find out that these guys are known around the world for ruining our environment. Oh. Now, if the very same company who, which Vietnam is still dealing with, the, the, the consequences of Agent Orange is now telling you that what they're doing is safe, I think you should question that on a patriotic level. This is when the same people come multiple times with the same sweet story, but in the end, they fail to really show substance. The second thing is that these are some of the wealthiest corporations in the world. Let me tell you, if they're telling you about cost, gang, you come to my house, I'll tell you guys about cost savings, okay? Um, so that's, I feel, very important. Thirdly, when you look at the type of farmers that they're supporting, and if they say small businesses are the heartbeat, the soul of America, well, small farmers are the original blood and sweat of this country. And I'm talking about free farmers, free with a choice. Now, these corporations take away that choice and they take away that freedom that freedom to be an American, that freedom to be a human being in America is at stake when I take my children to the store and I cannot teach my children how to make the best decision. Now, I ask you this question. If there are GMO corns not for human consumption and GMO corns for human consumption and you were to both have the corn seed in front of you, how would you be able to tell which was for human consumption and which wasn't. I can tell you, every single kernel is labeled at these factories because the Monsanto scientists themselves, just by looking at the kernels, would not be able to tell the difference. Every seed corn is how these guys are paid. 
it is already labeled. Now, when it comes to labeling, I will summarize this very quickly. When it comes to labeling, guys, it's simply a change. Your diaper is dirty. Change the diaper. You know, this is not a big thing. When your clothes are dirty, you change it. You don't look at the cost. You make the change. The community is not going to stop bringing this issue up. Right. It behooves you guys to not deal with it. Deal with it now. The solution is democracy. The solution is that you guys vote in favor, not of this bill, but of the American right to discuss it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Chair, Aloha Vice Chair, Committee Members. My name is Jerry DiPietro. I'm a volunteer with Hawaii Seed and GMO Free Kauai. Uh, consumers have the right to know if their food is produced with genetic engineering. Labeling and complete bans are standard practice in many countries. As a matter of fact, the United States is one of the last countries to address this issue. And one thing the chemical corporation folks, these chemical corn guys, uh, fail to mention when they talk about the hardships of labeling is that the Hawaiian papaya, the rainbow GMO papaya, is labeled before it even leaves our state when it goes to Japan. So we on Kauai have five of the big chemical corporations conducting open air field tests uh, right next to our communities and schools. And I'll tell you, these, these crops are not substantially equivalent. Um, here we are, saying as 10 years ago, there is no disclosure as to where the fields are, what they are spraying, no human feeding studies, and no post-market study. Just one big national experiment with the biotech companies saying, trust us. One reason it is difficult to pin disease to GMO food is because in America, there is no control group. There are no large groups of people who are not eating a diet that includes GMO food. When you look at health and eating habits of Americans, how would we know for sure if GMO has a link to obesity, heart disease, diabetes, allergies, attention deficit, and reproductive uh, issues? For sure there is an epidemic of poor health, and for sure there is an epidemic of people eating transgenic foods with viral promoters and antibiotic resistance. But not one good study. How very disappointing for our country. It really saddens me to see us, the world, at the start of a new millennium with the herbicide industry as the beneficiary of the food supply. The government offices hold biases born out of conflict of interest, and the trust issues are amplified by the question of who really benefits from GMO food. So with the GMO papaya, there's two antibiotic resistant markers. If you were someone who had uh, health problems and you relied on antibiotics, you might wish to avoid eating these foods and we should have a choice. What could be more stupid than to put toxic genes into our food? So thank you very much. Okay, um, we're, going we're going to allow just one more testifier. Take the people who travel far away. Testify people that would travel far away. I know. We, uh, the members are, are um, required Island. to go to session, so I appreciate that. We will be back here at one. But go ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Representative. My name is Nomi Carbona. I'm the president and founder of a nonprofit called Babes Against Biotech. We're devoted to environmental education and awareness about the impacts of GMOs. We represent over 1,900 members, and we're growing very, very quickly. I just uh, submitted an extensive testimony to you, 19 pages, 234 resources, of which 207 are peer-reviewed scientific studies demonstrating the risks to the environment and our health by eating GMOs. I'm very tired of hearing biotech representatives who are being paid to say there's no scientific evidence these are harmful. I have given you 207 and the studies they're referring to are paid for by their own industry and their interest groups. Did you know that only 90-day trials are required to release a new GMO product into our food supply? These uh, GMOs have been found in numerous animal studies to show generational effects in the second and third generations that are very serious, including sterility, infertility, endocrine disruption, cancer, cancerous tumors, organ enlargement, uh, problems with protein and cholesterol synthesis, and uh, problems with the kidney, liver, and spleen, 
as well as the digestive system as well. So we're, <laughs> we're not playing. We have a right to know. And we're tired of asking over and over again when 61 countries already require GMO labeling and 29 have banned GMOs in some form or another, the entire European Union. Are we not worthy to know what is in our food? Do you not respect our own choices enough? I don't think it's you personally, but you have an opportunity to advance these measures today. And it's quite pertinent, over a thousand people marched on the Capitol on opening day on January 16th, demanding GMO labeling and the abolishment of the PLDC. Not a single person asked that non-GMO food be labeled. Not a single person. We want GMO foods labeled. Their reliance, this industry, on the fact that we cannot identify their products. They have a consistent history of denying the, the dangers of their products and fighting labeling in the name of cost. Heard in case in the late 70s when chemicals like Monsanto's DDT, PCBs, and vinyl chloride were starting to be proven harmful to people, chemical companies, including Monsanto, strongly resisted with increased regulation and a massive PR campaign that said it would cost $2 million jobs and have a negative economic impact of $65 billion. After the stronger regulations were enacted, the actual cost turned out to be 5% of their estimate. It had no impact to jobs and the industry continued to grow. I've attached in my testimony to you a study analysis of uh, four major studies that are independently funded about the cost of GMO labeling and two industry funded. You can see the industry funded are greatly over exaggerated, but if you summarize all of them together, it's about $5 per capita, so $5 per person per year uh, on average to increase that. Vegetarians and vegans alone need to know what is in their food and if it has animal genes. I'll do my best to wrap this up quickly. Um, they've collected themselves with $45 million to fight GMO labor in California. I don't want to hear they don't have the money to tell me <laughs> that GMOs are in my food. Thank you. Class action lawsuits are starting to pop up across the state, and already 52,000 uh, dead sea urchins have been found off the coast of a pioneer farm in Kauai. So, <laughs> the sea urchins are the canary in the coal mine of the ocean. How long are you going to wait? They're the most endangering and invasive species of all, and there, is, there may be no recuperation. We may never be able to grow food on the land they're growing on right now. This is the most pressing issue in Hawaii today. They're irresponsibly releasing highly controversial new life forms of highly questionable ethics in regard to health and environmental safety. They've been exiled from dozens of countries, and the damages are piling up. Without proper labeling, we cannot trace the effects here. Our Hapai mothers should be able to choose whether or not they want to be like the mothers in Canada who had 84% of their fetal blood contaminated with Bt pesticide and 96% of the mother's blood. And can, for can you start to summarize? Please? Absolutely, absolutely. I think I've said almost everything I want to say except for families who are struggling with affording food. They may want to consider not donating tens of thousands of dollars to politicians and lobbying efforts. Mahalo. So I appreciate everybody taking the time to be here. We want to make sure we hear everybody's testimony. We're going to be recessing this hearing until 1 p.m. We will return. I'm recessed at 1 p.m. We're at the uh, hearing on various GMO bills. You heard this one on HB 174. There's a Lancelot. Hey, <laughs> I said, brah. Hey, nice seeing you. You're live on the internet. What do you want to say to everybody out there? No, to GMO <laughs> on our land. All right, that's it. Right. Hawaiian Islands, they need to leave and put no more GMO here. They need to label all GMO products. So we know what we are buying when we go to the store. Right. I made pork squash soup with squash, organic, in Haleiwa Malama Market, grown in Haleiwa. That's the kind of food we want to eat. Right. Alright, folks, if you're talking about uh, bills um, that's not 1145 or 673, could you please exit the room? Otherwise, could you sit down and be quiet so we can perform the committee? Different one. Thank you. Different one, yeah. Huh? Are you Hesh? No, I'm not. Where's Hesh? I, I haven't seen him. He might be out in the hallway. So so you tell me with, with the ponytail. <laughs> I'm not Hesh. I know Hesh. What is he wearing? So I, uh, you know, I haven't seen him. Oh, you didn't come today? I don't know. I haven't seen him.
<laughs> yeah, no, that was good. I, really good. And I caught it. Yeah. Oh, there's another one. Where, what's the number of the one on uh, the, the pesticide? Yeah. That's my pocket. So, where are you from? Um, on the underground parking lot? 672. Can I walk okay, you to your car? Thank you, Nomi. <laughs> okay, I tell you what, I'll be happy to defer this until 305. I'm going to take over to HD2. And I have one for HD673. Maybe you can test the sign. If you have any questions, call it in the room. Okay, we will recess the decision making hearing until 305 p.m. Okay, everything is going to continue later on uh, this afternoon. One or so one thirty. Tell everyone to leave. They push. They're telling. They're telling people now that they're not actually going to have that meeting. Well, they're going to have it at three after the continuation of the other one. So now. So nothing's going on, right? So so nine thirty and eleven thirty move to one and three thirty. <laughs> okay. So we're we'll go out in the hallway and see if we can get some interviews. Tell me who you are and what brings you out here. Uh, good morning, friend. My name is Blade Walsh. I am uh, a free-thinking individual of this planet, and I am here because my friends are here because we believe that, or at least I believe, that GMOs are bad. They shouldn't be here. They should be banned or burned. They shouldn't be here at all. And there's still all this talk about how, oh, well, you know, labeling them would hurt the market, it would hurt jobs, and or, oh, you know what, if we if we label those, then we need to label non-GMO foods as well, and, you know, just <laughs> this crap that they throw at you to try to throw you off, to try to, to try to distract you from the real issue, which is that GMOs are hurting the environment, they're hurting people, they're, they're destroying the, the ecosystem, really, like, they, they, are, they are one of the biggest contributors to climate change that's going on right now, right up there with, like, fossil fuels and power grids and civilization, right, right. So, <clears throat> so we need to deal with this now, we can't keep deferring it, or, or, you know, oh, well, we can't hear everyone's testimony, so we're going to hold this meeting later. We can't, we can't keep pushing this back. This has to be addressed now. This has to be taken care of immediately. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Doug. Blade, right? Yep. Blade Walsh. Yep. All right. Thanks. Thank you much. I, I also have, um, I have pictures for you from the, um, the, the Craft Christmas. At, oh at City yeah. Hall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was thinking I could send them to you, and it could help boost your article about the. Uh, um, oh, the. Because they have advertising on the. Price the tape, adver right? yeah, advertising yeah, on the crime tape. Like, yeah, exactly. So there's just advertisement everywhere. You know. Yeah. Oh no, you can't have a banner about oh. Indivi you know, indigenous rights or, right. or sovereignty rights. But you can have advertising. But you can have advertising for craft macaroni and cheese. Right. At City Hall in their City Christmas. Hall. <laughs> Or, or if you're Disney, you can have a big sculpture of your newest movie and tell right. kids that it's okay to keep buying and give them to That's an interesting movie. point, definitely. Yeah, send them to me. <laughs> yeah, I will. <laughs> Thanks. I'm gonna step out. All right, I'm going to see if what's happening outside in the hallway is where the action is. Now the, if you're just joining us, the hearings are going to be uh, continued in the, in the afternoon. Whoops. A lot of people here. I'll be back. I'll be. I'm coming back on Saturday. Chimos, chimos, house well, I think what I'll do is probably uh. 
cut out and come back uh, when things reconvene at, at one. Maybe I'll go have some lunch or something. Thanks for being here. I'll follow my tweets at hdoug, and uh, I'll give some broadcast notice. Um, I had some great testimony here. Uh, I found some a uh, good angle finally at the end there to, to shoot the testimony and whatnot. So we'll be uh, coming back later. Thank you very much.